Hello again. So last time I talked about the fact that my school was a creationist school, but I didn't really get into a whole lot about the actual creationist aspect. So today I want to talk a little bit about the real insidious part about having a school that denies certain elements of science. It's not usually so much that they teach a ton of stuff that's false. It's more that they just ignore the things that are true. So in my school, we really didn't discuss a lot of things in terms of evolution versus creationism. It was simply presented as creationism is what happened, and we spent about mm, a day, maybe, talking about what evolution was and why it was wrong. And this is actually a really key point for me, where I realized that my teachers weren't always, it wasn't just that they weren't always correct, it was that sometimes it seemed like they had to know that they were incorrect. There's no way that the arguments presented could have fooled a grown adult. Fifteen-year-olds weren't really swayed by it. The one day that I remember us discussing evolution actually in a science classroom, the one time that we really discussed it where they wanted to present to us the reasons why it was false, I remember the one real point that our teacher tried to make, and I should stress that this is not Mr. C. Um, our science department was sort of like defense against the dark arts. Every other teacher every year stayed the same, but we always had to get a new science teacher. So this was a different teacher the year before Mr. C even showed up. And what they did was the teacher put, and by the way, she was nice. Like, I'm not even going to get into that. Like, she was not Mr. C. She was actually smart. She actually was a good teacher. This was the one thing that they just had to get out of the way, and I don't even know if she really bought it. But they put a, a you know, the, the overhead transparency up, you know, and beamed it up onto the, to the projection, uh, to the screen. And it basically was a series of vertical lines with animal names on it. And it, and it looked kind of like a family tree, only where you couldn't tell who was begetting who. And the problem was that they said, see, look, this is, this is, you know, the fossil record, which, I mean, it was a series of lines. Like, I'm not even exaggerating by how simple this was. And they said, well, this is the record, and there's nothing that connects any of these things together. Therefore, evolution is not true. So I'm not sure if they meant that, like, God was creating raccoons a million years after he created dinosaurs, or they never really got into any of that. They just said, nothing connects, therefore it's not true. And even at 15, being a slacker, because, I mean, a slacker by my school standards, which basically meant I was a B student, um, but even by my standards, I caught on immediately that this was wrong. There was only one of two ways that you could have possibly taken what they were showing you. One is the actual family tree idea, and this would be along the idea of, you know, a, a German shepherd got mounted by a guinea pig and popped out a capybara. Immediately I had to dismiss this as a possibility of what they were trying to get at, because there's just no way anyone was stupid enough to think that we would buy that that's what evolution was actually trying to show us. So the other option was basically the most common reasoning that a very, very simplistic people in terms of their educational, uh, uh, I don't know, in, in terms of their overall knowledge of what evolution is, the first thing they do is go, well, you know, a dinosaur never gave birth to a chicken. So obviously uh, macro evolution cannot possibly happen. And this struck me as a fallacy even then. Um, I looked at it and I went, there, there shouldn't be any right angles. Uh, you, you always can tell that something's a little fuzzy when they're talking about, you know, long periods of time and really, you know, uh, uh, small changes when all of a sudden they want there to be this just complete split. Uh, you know, all of a sudden one day, you know, this wolf is, is a dog and, and that's just it, just in one generation, rather than these very slow, gradual ideas. And so even without being taught correctly what evolution was, the, the impact was that the method they used to teach me it was wrong actually gave me, in my own head, what the correct answer was. That this was not 
a, a bunch of straight lines with, with missing connections, that it was a, a root system, so to speak, that it was all branching out very, very gradually, and that you wouldn't see any one, you know, sudden change in a species like that, like not just instantly. So the best thing they really did was present it like that and then just completely ignore it for the rest of my entire schooling. Like, after that, they just didn't want to talk about it. They're just like, you know what, that's what we're going to show you, put that down on the test, and you're done. It, it sort of reminded me of my Bible teacher trying to talk about the book of Revelation. Uh, it, it was another one of those subjects where in the school, rather than dealing with the controversial subject, they just gloss over it, walk away, and wash their hands of it. Um, so yeah, I think that when it comes to creation of schools, the insidious part is not so much all the falsehoods that someone is taught, uh, so much as the fact that they're just not taught much about it at all. My fear is that that actually completely destroys a student's curiosity in a subject matter, that if, if they're told constantly that, oh, this is a, a, a subject we don't want to discuss, so therefore it is not up for discussion, some people, you know, plenty of us, myself included, looked at this and went, mm, no, I think we're just going to kind of start ditching the mythology. But there are plenty of students that unfortunately just kind of continued on with this lack of curiosity. And that's the real problem. It's not that they're taught so many ways to deny something that's true. It's that they're just not given any information on it at all. And as an adult, that can become very... Uh, Defen you know, can we can become very defensive about that, and suddenly it's just, well, I don't want to talk about it because, you know, not because I have all these great ideas of why it's so wrong, because I'm just frustrated that I don't know anything about it at all. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of how the the creationist aspect of of my school went. It was basically just glossed over, and and for years it didn't even occur to me that. We didn't really actually have a lot of the same education as a lot of other people you would hope had. Uh, the upside is that unlike public schools, my English teacher actually taught us parts of speech, so I can actually identify adjectives and adverbs and crazy things like that that I could not do in junior high because the public school just never actually gave us that lesson, which I'm not sure how they managed to do that in, you know, eight years of schooling, just never got around to, you know, Verbs. Whatever. Uh, so that's enough about my high school experience for today. The only other topic I wanted to talk about really briefly was uh, Missouri. I don't know how many people have actually looked at this. Missouri, or particularly I think it's Rick Britton, Barton, something like that. Legislator in Missouri has decided that it'd be a fantastic idea to go ahead and just redefine scientific theory legally, because you can do that. <laughs> so apparently now, scientific theory is going to be an explanation that includes data logic and faith-based philosophy. I'm not even making that up. Faith-based philosophy is part of what a scientific theory is. My brain is insulted. I mean, basically, that just means now that a scientific theory is no better than just calling it a guess. Like, that's what they've always wanted anyway. The people that have pushed the creationist agenda have always just wanted a scientific theory to be a guess, you know. The, the casual definition of theory rather than the scientific definition. And, of course, when you can't win on that, the best thing to do is just change the definition of words. So, you know, now if scientific theory includes Jesus, because that's that's the way you should do that. Um, not much more to say about that, except for that's just a horrible, horrible thing to do, and there's no way it's going to pass, but the fact that somebody had the audacity to bring it up is pretty awful. Uh, have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.